So when I'm solving simultaneously, uh, step two is not much of a step. Here is step three. What I'm gonna end up doing is saying, hey, if I'm equating these, right? Solving simultaneously. Simultaneously is such a long word to write, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace my X's and Y's and Z's with what I saw from the equation of line PQ, right? So therefore what I'm getting is something like this. Let's try and draw it nice and big. So uh, read the X components from line PQ with me. It's gonna be three plus one lambda, right? So just lambda. Um, the Y coordinate is gonna be negative one plus two lambda. And then the Z is negative two minus lambda. There we go, equals square root 26. Okay, help me out. What are we gonna do with this? Any suggestions for how I can do something to help me work this uh, out? Probably uh, turn it into like a square root equation, probably say. Yeah, yeah, very good. That's right, so remember, this, this is a magnitude, right? So the magnitude is just using Pythagoras' theorem in three dimensions, and because I've got a square root on the right-hand side, and there's going to be a square root on the left-hand side, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to square out everything so I don't have to worry about those, right? So if you do, like what you might remember is this is our formula for magnitude from the origin, right? That's, um, that's gonna be the square root of 26 in this case, right? So when I square out both sides, this is what I'm going to get. It's slightly laborious, but that's okay, let's, let's go for it. So there's my first one, three plus lambda squared. I've got negative one plus two lambda squared. And then lastly, minus two minus lambda squared. That is the square root of 26 squared. Okay, so that's why I get 26 over there. Now at this point, uh, you know, hooray, I have some algebra to do, right? So you guys probably can um, sort of leap ahead without me. In fact, I'm guessing <laughs> that's probably what you're already doing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep up with you a little bit. I'm going to expand everything out. Uh, and what I'm going to do, slightly weird, but I'm going to write this expansion on the left-hand side across three lines, and hopefully you will see why I'm doing that, right? So first binomial gives me this. Um, nine plus six lambda plus lambda squared. Next one's gonna give me plus one minus four lambda plus four lambda squared. And then what am I getting on the end here? This is gonna be four plus four lambda plus lambda squared. All of that is equal to 26. Can anyone suggest to me why was it worthwhile, despite it being weird, to write this across three lines? Any suggestions? Because you're still trying to, oh no, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Quite, like, put them together, so just yeah, them together. exactly. I'm collecting like terms, right? That's what I had to do out of this monstrous expansion. But really what I'm doing is, I'm setting up a vertical algorithm. Like this is no different, get this, right? This is literally no different to doing back when you were in like year three or year four and you got told if you were adding, uh, you know, three digit numbers together, then what you should do is you should put them in a column, right? And you would do something like this and then you would, you know, off you go, okay? Now, <laughs> this is literally the same because when you see like that, see that five right there? That five is just code for five times 10, it's not really five, right? And then what's that two? It's code for two times 10 squared. That's what base 10 means. So I've just replaced all my tens with lambdas. If you wanna think about it this way, this is decimal or base 10, and what you're doing is arithmetic in base lambda. <laughs> I don't know if that makes it feel better or worse for you, but that's what I'm doing, I just wanna make it easy for me. So what have I got? Uh, let's see here, it looks to me like I'm getting, what, 14? Yep. The plus and minus four lambda cancel, so that gives me six lambda. And how many lambda squareds do I have? Six. Also six, that's all equal to 26. And so if I subtract uh, 26 from both sides and uh, tidy up just a little bit, I'm gonna end up with minus 12. What should we do with this? 
Uh, probably take that factor of six. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna take out the factor of six and then divide through by it because I've got zero on the right hand side anyway. So that gives me lambda squared plus lambda minus two. Uh, this is a nice easy quadratic to factorize. What are you guys getting? Uh, lambda plus two times by lambda minus one. Okay, outstanding. So as we were kind of hoping for, I've got my two values for lambda. They are negative two and one. So that, <laughs> that was probably the hardest step, that was the longest one, step three, because step one wasn't too difficult, step two was hardly even a step, and we're now up to the final part, right? What did we say we were going to do with these lambdas? Substitute them. Yeah, yeah. The fantastic. So I'm going to get uh, some, you know, coordinates from lambda equals negative two, and then I'm going to get some different coordinates from lambda equals one. So uh, let's call that two points A and B, for example, right? So if I call this A and yeah. this B, uh, maybe you guys can help me out here, right? So I'm, I might go back and get my equation of my line. Here it is, just so that I can see it while I'm doing my working. Cool. Hopefully, there we go. I copied more than I was supposed to. There we go. So when you substitute in, can you see what I'm doing here? I'm going to get three plus one because I've substituted, oh, wrong one, sorry. That's three uh, minus two, is that right? Three minus two, uh, negative one minus four, uh, negative two plus two. How's that look? Yeah. Yep, so here are my coordinates, just by simplification. And then correspondingly, this is the one I accidentally started working out. This one is three plus one, negative one plus two, negative two minus one. So we've got coordinates for this as well. Is that okay? Okay, so um, if I were in two dimensions, I would ask you to have a look at those coordinates and then do a sense check for me, right? Because even without drawing it, you could very roughly like um, image in your mind, where's the circle? Where are these points? And you could um, very roughly do this, right? But doing sense checks in three dimensions is really hard, right? So what I'm gonna ask you to do, sorry, I should have asked this right at the start, but is it gonna take you guys a while to open up your laptops and boot them up? Do you have them there? Oh uh, uh, yeah, you're on, you're on the screen, of course you are, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and do this alongside um, you, and it will take me some time, so don't worry, Sean, if you wanna get your laptop, you'll have some time, okay? What I want us to do, is open up 3D GeoGebra. I'm gonna try and do this at the same time. Whoa, I just, <laughs> nope, it just crashed. That's okay. There we go, okay. My, um, <laughs> my, my, my iPad crashed for a moment, so hopefully you can still see that. Is that coming up? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, I don't know if you're able to, I mean, you can see you're working in front of you and you can also see, um, hopefully you're getting GeoGebra up and running. So I'm gonna have to teach you just a little bit about how to input this into GeoGebra, but it's not, it's not too difficult, okay? So what we wanna do is put the sphere on, we wanna put the line on, and then we wanna see if the coordinates match what we're hoping for, right? So um, to do this part, uh, we are going to need, like the easiest way in 3D GeoGebra is to do a Cartesian equation, okay? So we did the uh, vector equation, uh, but I, Ryan and Sean, I couldn't quite hear which one of you started talking about the Cartesian equation, um, and it's just going to use like, like a circle in two dimensions, instead of x squared plus y squared, what are we gonna add on to make it three-dimensional? Uh, k squared. Oh, uh, z squared. A z squared, yeah, that's right, because that's what we call our axes, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go x squared plus y squared, <laughs> and you're like, ooh, what is this? Uh, this is called a paraboloid, by the way. You can do some, I encourage you to explore GeoGebra in three dimensions, it's just, there's so much cool stuff you can do, but if I add now a z squared, well, not a square root, a z squared. Um, it's not giving me a sphere yet because what's the missing piece? I need a radius. Now don't forget, I'm about to write a Cartesian equation, right? So unlike the vector equation, this is not r on the right hand side, it's r squared. Very good, because this is a Pythagorean quadruple. Do you remember we were talking about that? So in this case, I won't write the square root of 26, I'll just write 26. There we go, okay? So there's my sphere. Have you guys got one as well? 
Or are you just following me? You don't have to. It's okay. That's okay. All right, all right. So let's now let's now add um, let's now add a circle onto this. Sorry, we've got a circle, a sphere rather. Let's now add our um, line. So the equation of our line was um, you remember the position vector and also the um, direction vector. So 3D GeoGebra is slightly finicky. So I'm going to try and do this right. I tested it out last night. So what I want is, um, can you guys help me remember what was the um, what was the position vector? Three negative one negative two. Three negative one negative two. Okay, so there is um, there is that. Now just pause for a minute, right? Can you see what's just happened? It's already put on um, a, a vector there um, that represents going to the point. 3, comma, negative 1, comma, negative 2. But that's not what I actually want, right? I don't want a vector like that. I want the, 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 the whole line that goes through this point, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, okay, and tell me what was, the, uh, what was the direction vector we worked out? We simplified it, didn't we? 1, 2, negative. 1, 2, and then negative 1. And then to turn this into the line that we want, I hope I get this right because I was testing it before, um, I'm going to multiply by uh, a, an appropriate, what's it called? Um, an appropriate parameter. That's what we called lambda, right? Now, uh, it tends to be, I think what GeoGebra is expecting is a t. Yay, success, I got it, okay? So have a look, what do we got here? This is, and I might just actually put um, three... Uh, what was it? 3, negative 1, negative 2. That was our position vector, right? Sorry, there we go. 3, comma, negative 1, comma, negative 2. There it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this around now. So you can see, sure enough, that line that we just created, line PQ, right? Um, in fact, let's, let's call that P because that is what it was. Shift P. There we go, hooray. Okay, here's P, it is on the line, right? I suppose we could put Q as well if you wanted to be sure, but hopefully you're convinced that that is the right line. And as you can see, it, it does intersect with the sphere at a couple of spots, okay? So finally, we're ready to actually test, did we get the spots right, okay? So can you tell me what were the coordinates of the first point we found? Uh, one, negative five, and zero. One, negative five, and zero. So I'm going to hold my breath, and then can you give me the second point? 4, 1, and negative 3. 4, 1, negative 3. And I cannot tell you what a sigh of relief I gave when I put this into 3D GeoGebra. And I, I thought, oh, I got it right. You can even see, because it's on the outside of the sphere, if I um, zoom in a little bit there, you can see it's not, um, compare, compare A and P. Can you see P is actually inside the sphere? Um, and that's why it's kind of... Um, it's a bit translucent in front, the red's in front of it, right? Whereas A, you can see pops out in front, and B, if you look really closely at it, you can see it's also popping out as well, and it's a bit different. I've just rotated around, so now A's behind, right? It's on the other side. But there you go, okay? So, um, I encourage you when you're doing these questions in three dimensions, make use of 3D GeoGebra so that you can see what's going on because you want to visualize it. But it is just, as you can tell, extraordinarily hard to draw, right? So uh, use technology to help you there. That's, that's why it's there, okay? Cool. All right, does anyone have any questions? Does that make sense? That's cool. No, that's awesome. Okay. Brilliant. Um, and hopefully, by the way, you can start to think, even though I haven't really talked about it explicitly, just how important these applications are to just like engineering and communications in the world. Like we do things like this all the time. Um, a lot of the calculations that are going on underneath, say for example, the global positioning system, GPS, when satellites are trying to work out where you are, um, they do these calculations all the time in three-dimensional vectors. It's, um, it's really phenomenal that we're touching such a very relevant practical piece of math.